Have you ever wondered about Hoyas and Lekka or Hoyas in general? If you have, this show is for you and stay tuned because I will be interviewing someone special who has lots of Hoyas. I have not asked her any of these questions ahead of time. So it's Corky um, and her name's it's Courtney, but Corky's um, I will have all her stuff linked below. I actually found her on Instagram and she has over a hundred Hoyas and Lekka and I have four. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for all of us to explore Hoyas and Lekka. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and Skype her and this is gonna be a fun experiment. So I have my questions. Oh, here we go. Perfectly. Okay, so I can't see you yet. I can see you! Yay! Okay. Tell us a little bit about your uh, journey with Hoyas and how how you kind of came to Hoyas. Okay. Yeah, so initially my grandmother raised me and she had this beautiful Hoya Compacta hanging by our kitchen. And it was huge. Um, it probably had... 10 or 15 really long strands. Of course, I never knew what this plant was at the time, but everybody just loved it when they would come to our house. And when she passed away three years ago, I inherited this plant. Is it and the one behind you? No, that's that's um, uh, from Exotic Angels, that like the Costa Farms version. But um, so the plant that I have is a little different. It's like the swirls are really compact and tight. And um, so, yeah, when I inherited this plant, I didn't know how to care for plants at all. <laughs> and um, just by sheer luck, it survived a year and a half with me, not really doing much except watering it maybe once a month. <laughs> and then I noticed one day it was turning a bit yellow. And I thought, I need to figure out how to actually care for this thing because I can't lose it. <laughs> so that started my research into how to actually care for plants. And then eventually figured out this was a Hoya and there were more that you could get. That's kind of, you've been with Hoyas, like that's, that's the one who brung you with yes. the Hoya. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how you started there and you stayed there. Yep. So how many Hoyas do you have currently? Or do you know? Oh. <laughs> that's a good question. I think the last time I counted, it was about 40 ish different species. Yes. Okay. And what's your favorite, like, top three? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I think I like Rotundiflora, if I'm saying that correctly. I could show it to you. <laughs> <clears throat> Although I can't really see myself, so I don't know. Can you see it? It's growing like a weed right now, which is crazy since it's the middle of winter. Um... And it's so hard to pick favorites, but I really love just the typical... What led you to Lekka in the process? Yeah, um, I think I was watching Doug Chamberlain's channel and saw that he was experimenting with it. Though he kind of put me off for a little while because he said, I, I put all my Hoyas in Lekka thinking it was going to be the best thing ever and then ended up throwing them all in the backyard. And I was like, well, maybe I don't want to try that. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's kind of discouraging. There was another person on Instagram yesterday and they have kind of a big following. They're like, well, I tried it and I'm going to go back to dirt. And I'm like, there's no going back to fungus gnats. I'm sorry. There's just none. Yeah. So, um, at least for me, like it's Lekka or nothing. So, mm -hmm. so what was the, do you remember the first Hoya you put in Lekka? Um, uh, yeah, I think I, it's a, just a general Carnosa because I didn't want to mess up. <laughs> yeah. And then I also started putting cuttings into it because I thought there's not much to lose that way. Had any or many Hoyas die in the process? Mm. No, I haven't had any die in Lekka. I have had them die when I transferred them away from Lekka. <laughs> Probably it was a lot of stress to be a cutting in Lekka, and then I moved it back to the normal Hoya mix, and then they suffered. <laughs> so, yeah. Have your plants been more difficult to put into um, 
semi hydroponics than others? I can't think of any that didn't thrive right away. I'm not super fussy about them. I kind of just stick them in the LECA and then make sure the reservoir is good to go. And I don't really pay attention to them. <laughs> and I think that's why Hoyas work for me because I am not breathing over my plants all the time. <laughs> I hear that it's ideal to do it in the spring, in the summer. And I can understand why since they grow faster at that time. I personally like to take cuttings in the fall, which is strange, because then they've got all winter to, to grow roots, and then by springtime, they're ready to just pop with growth. Yes. Okay, I love that. So, and then what nutrient system do you use? I use the general hydroponics, so it's got the three different types, yes. three bottles that you mix. And then do you measure the pH? <laughs> uh, I have the kit to do that, but I haven't done it. <laughs> And, and then, um, like, what kind of water do you use? We have well water. That's softened. Once adapted to the LECA, how often do you water your individual plants on the average? Yeah. Um, I would say once a week I go around and fill all the reservoirs. Um, but I definitely let them all dry out, and I try to water them, like, the day after they're dry. Let them have a little dry period and then, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, have you rescued Hoyas by putting them in LECA and what is your process? Oh. Yes, I have rescued some. There was one, a Hoya carii. I think I said that right. <laughs> um, it came to me in a pot that was probably too big and the roots were rotting. So I basically took it out and cut off all the roots. So... <laughs> and then stuck it in the LECA and forgot about it. And now it, I check it now and it's perfectly fine. It's got a couple new leaves coming out. And it's when I tug on it, it's not coming out. So I know that it's doing pretty well now. A lot of times it's very shallow. How do you get it to stay down in there? Or you just kind of take off those bottom leaves and stick it way down? Like... To get it to not topple over and then don't touch it. <laughs> so, yeah. Nothing special, really, but I sometimes I will put more LECA on the leaves and then just whatever it takes to keep it stable. But, yeah, that is kind of a problem when they're just baby cuttings. <laughs> Artificial lighting, do you feel like you need a mist or use humidifiers? Or are your plants just kind of, like, hanging out? I don't change the atmosphere at all. Um, we have really big windows, and that seems to do really well can see it so what's interesting is the Hoyas that are right next to the window grow a lot faster than the ones that are by the wall and so this like if you get strong sun in the summer it doesn't seem to burn them or uh, like affect them negatively yeah. yeah I do have to pull them back or make sure they're not in the direct sun because I had an issue last summer with leaves dropping and I think it was just because they were too hot so probably a, just a thin layer or just one curtain would be good I use hydrogen yeah so you use it's available for the regular <laughs> smooth the smooth pebbles the smooth ones yes um and then if you're in Indiana and so do you see any difference in like winter growth and summer growth yeah um for about a month in December, everybody stops growing. <laughs> and then right now, I'm seeing new growth on most plants, so which is earlier than last winter. So I think that they're starting to grow sooner than last winter. So, like, your collection is pretty complete, or are you, like, <laughs> still collecting? Like, do you have... Yeah. I definitely have certain plants I'm looking for. Like, I would love to have Hoya Serpens. Um, and I definitely check my favorite nurseries websites probably weekly. <laughs> okay. And so what is there, are there, uh, nurseries that are better for buying Hoyas online? Yeah, I think that it comes down to personal preference, but I like to buy small plants if possible or cuttings because, um, so with Gardino's nursery, I love their big plants cause you can buy a plant from them and you probably get three stems and you could probably take cuttings from them. 
so they're big. But I I worry more because they're they're used to Florida, not Indiana. And sometimes they don't do well for me. Oh, so, okay. So, so what you, I usually end up doing is I get the plant and I take cuttings of it immediately. <laughs> smaller, you can get smaller cuttings mm-hmm. and that's preferable for you. For me. Yeah. I wonder, they just root so fast in LECA. So. Right. <laughs> and so when you put the cutting in the LECA, do you like water it from the top or do you like, is the LECA all wet or do you just have water in the reservoir? Like how do you, how do you do the water? When you first transition. Yeah. So the general recommendation is that the water reservoir would be one third of the pot. I think that's what most people say. And I just do that with the cuttings. I don't change the water level to be higher for a cutting. So, yeah, the LECA starts off wet and it's got a little bit of water in the reservoir. And then that's fine. Mm. Are you wanting to keep the existing roots? I think the cutting is going to take off and grow faster than the plant that has the dirt roots in LECA. So that's interesting because I'm, I like big plant hoe. And so (laughs) the bigger, the better, but Mm -hmm. the Hoyas, um, and I want to get more because I don't have humidifiers and, um, they are like easier maintenance as far as like all of that goes and they're beautiful. And so have you had much flowering on yours? Um, yes and no. So the big baskets all flower for me. So like Hoya, Lacanosa, Carnosa, I can't remember. DS70 is on the label, but there's controversy over what that name actually is. <laughs> um, all of those flower for me. And I'm just starting to get some of my starter plants from cuttings that are getting peduncles on them. But yeah. <laughs> well, um, I just want to say thank you for the the videos, I was browsing your channel and saw 10 things that you should do for success in LECA, and I really liked that video. <laughs> Second I heard of houseplants in LECA, I was like, I went and bought 100 houseplants, yeah. and I was like, you are all going into LECA. Still be collecting, but just finding the balance and combining plants, mm-hmm. like taking, you know, so I like to get doubles or triples of plants or do cuttings, and then this year I'm kind of putting all of them into one Mm-hmm. Trying to make bigger baskets and, and combining like plants. So, yeah. So that's... Did you, did you find that the spider mites got better when you were using LECA? I've never had the spider mites. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> but I think the spider mites were um, largely brought on by lack of humidity Mm-hmm. And I don't do humidifiers, but I do have a, a habit What I turn on all my lamps in the morning. And when I turn on my lamps, as I'm turning them on, I missed all, okay. all of my plants, but especially plants that like a little higher humidity. So I have a feeling the misting habit has actually just staved off. Yeah. I don't know if people get spider mites in Lekka. I've never had them. And okay. I only have had one pest in um, mealy bugs in the compacta. Okay. And I think it's because those leaves are so tight together. Mm-hmm. And if there was any stress in transitioning, they're just a, a nice little target for mealy bugs because they can be like underneath magic spray. Uh, I'll have to link it below, but I just like spray it with my magic spray. I don't quarantine or any of that stuff. Okay. And then they leave. Like it's one spray down and then I don't even have to do a follow up. So, um, but I'll find them just like underneath. Mm-hmm. But it's just that one plant. And um, I've had zero flying things. I have a hundred plants in Lekka, so I feel like that's a pretty good testam- testament yes. to the, mm-hmm. the pest part. Because that's my biggest issue with soil. A new channel, right? A new YouTube channel. Yes, I just started it. Yes. So I feel like I have enough variety in my collection now to be able to talk about plants and yes. how they're doing, and what's working. S- and so on your channel, are you just going to be mostly doing Hoyas and Laka? But for 2020, mm-hmm. like, what are your YouTube goals? Yeah, I think I just want to talk about what is working for me in my environment because 
Um, I'm very jealous of all the people who live in a place that's really sunny. (laughs) But there are a lot of new Hoya collectors now that don't live in a tropical area and want to know what the expectations could be for their plants. Will these flower? Will they thrive? And so I do want to show off what is working for me because they are doing well in in the middle of winter in Indiana. <laughs> and can't wait to follow your Instagram and see your progress for the spring. I have a feeling in spring you're going to get a lot of big growth. Yes, um, I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah. All right. Have a Bye-bye. great day. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed that interview. I loved Courtney and her take on Hoyas, and I hope this was encouraging to you. Um, I will work on microphones and audio things, but I feel like it was a really good interview and got a lot of my questions answered. So, hope you enjoyed this. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and can't wait to see you next time. Love you. Bye bye.